Hello YouTube, uh, Bushcraft Woods Devil here. This morning I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the knives I use and uh, some of the practices that I use uh, when I'm outdoors and uh, using my uh, knives on the trail. So what do I like to carry? Well, when I first started out, um, I wasn't too smart and I'd carry an overly large knife. I really like buoys and I still do like buoys, but buoys are hard to manipulate and I find any more than any knife with a blade more than say five inches is just really not practical for me. Now that may be different for you, but for me uh, a shorter blade is easier to manipulate. Um, some of the knives that you can use and you'll run into is uh, the traditional scout type knife with the uh, spear point uh, type blade and these have uh, extra tools like an awl and a uh, can opener and bottle cap lifter. And this is the traditional Boy Scout knife. It's fine. They generally do not have a locking blade, so uh, you could run into a problem with that if it slips and uh, collapses on your hand and cuts you. I do like a locking blade, and I think it's very interesting that the Cub Scout pocket knife has a locking blade. Obviously they considered that a young boy just learning is going to make more mistakes until he masters the knife. So they gave them a, a lock blade, but the traditional Boy Scout one is not a lock blade. And uh, so I, I personally like a lock blade. Now this is a uh, SE Zancudo. This is a single blade uh, folder with a pocket clip and a locking blade. And this is a really great knife for a lot of field uh, functions. Uh, you can carve with this and uh, it is not as apt to collapse on your fingers. Now I say not as apt because nothing is foolproof when it comes to a folding knife. A folding knife um, with a locking blade is a safety precaution. It's not a guarantee. So uh, put enough pressure on it and the uh, lock will probably collapse and the less expensive the knife, the more apt or more likely that that lock is going to fail. Now this is a really nice quality lock blade and um, this is not as apt to collapse as say your average uh, uh, liquor store uh, bucket budget knife. Something else that I like to use and I find extremely useful and I carry one every day is a multi-tool because I like to choose a multi-tool with a saw. Uh, the saw is great and I'll demonstrate that in a little bit for um, a lot of the things that I need to craft and it saves me time over trying to do it with a knife blade. I can do the skills with the knife blade but the saw uh, buys me time. It facilitates a lot of those skills faster. Uh, this has a variety of tools in it including pliers and that can be really helpful for picking a hot pot bale off the stove. Um, or off of a campfire. Um, so, or you want to bend a piece of wire back into shape or something. And then another uh, knife that I eventually like to carry is a fixed blade. I like a small fixed blade. This is a um, K-Bar Escobar. Okay, so this is a, a collaboration between uh, SE knives and K-Bar knives. So, uh, uh, K-Bar took the uh, Becker blade design and um, they removed the um, tool that was on this end. I think it had a uh, cap lifter in integrated into the Ethan Becker design. They went with a round um, hole here. Uh, Essie uh, had input Randall, Randall's Adventure and their logo is on the hasp here. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway. Um, this is a really a favorite of mine. You can see it's been used a lot, uh, a lot of uh, use in that, but it gives me good control because it's a small three inch blade. And um, also too, you got to check your jurisdictions uh, wherever you're at. Uh, there are restrictions on blade lengths. So uh, something to be aware of. Okay, I'm gonna set this camera down and uh, see if I can uh, talk about a couple other things. So uh, give me just a second here. And I'm going to sit down here. So, 
Okay, maybe this will work right at this angle here. One of the things that uh, you need to um, have with you when you're out in the field is some kind of a uh, field knife sharpener. This is an AccuSharp. This is a um, diamond um, uh, sharpening stone. So one side here is the rough side. It's, it's more of a medium grit. And uh, the other side is a fine grit for finishing uh, your knife blades. Now obviously at home, you're going to be taking care of your knives and sharpening them before you go out in the field. But if you're out in the field doing things, you're going to need to do some touch-up at some point. Um, why is that? Well, a sharp knife is a safe knife. If I keep a good sharp edge on this knife, it's going to cut well and I don't have to use as much force. And then I am going to have less likelihood of slipping and self-inflicting a cut. And uh, I will tell you right now, it's not a matter of if you will cut yourself. It's a matter of when you will cut yourself. You will eventually slip and cut yourself if you use knives enough. And if you don't believe that, watch uh, the Alone program on the History Channel. Here you have professional bush crafters and survivalists, very skilled. And uh, they are out there building things and sooner or later one of them gets knocked out of competition because of a severe uh, laceration or cut. It will happen, it's just a matter of time. So have a sharpening tool with you so that you can touch that blade up. Um, if you don't have a sharpening tool you can always find a smooth stone by a stream and uh, sharpen that up. Uh, that's always a possibility. So uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Another thing you need is a first aid kit. Because if, you, if and when you do cut yourself, you're going to want to uh, clean up the cut and address it. So this is a must-have, is a first aid kit with some bandages and maybe some uh, gauze and tape that you can uh, uh, clean it up and dress it until you can get home and have it cared for properly. This is essential. Knife, sharpening tool, and a first aid kit. Gloves, in case you're addressing someone else's cut. Maybe you're with a companion, they slip and cut themselves. Have gloves so that you can protect yourself against uh, uh, bloodborne pathogens uh, contamination. Okay. Skills. What kind of skills do we need? Okay. We need to be able to craft the things that we need. Uh, cutting a piece of wood, as I mentioned, having a um, saw is very useful. There's a sawed end on this branch. Very nice, clean cut. Great resource to have. What if I don't have this and I want to cut a limb so that I can make a pot hook or something? Well, one thing you can do is you can do what's called a beaver cut. So what you do is you go around one side of the area you want to cut and you make a series of cuts just like that. Then you reverse the work or you reverse on the work and you cut from the other side. This is just how a beaver makes its cuts when it's uh, felling a tree in a stream. Okay, Let's see how we're hourglassing that down and making it smaller. So eventually we will be able to pare this down so small that it just snaps and now I've cut the limb uh, to um, free it from the tree so that I can now dress it and use it however I need it. So beaver cut. But again the saw is a very useful tool. Um, 
let's say I want to make a stir stick for uh, something in camp and I want to remove the bark from uh, a piece of uh, sapling okay instead of holding it in the traditional grip and, and doing this reverse it okay I'm kind of getting used to the backwardsness of this camera um, reverse it and just choke up on the blade a little bit okay see how I kind of pinched it there and then you would just cut away from yourself and strip the bark from the sapling this is willow pretty soft easy wood and it's so abundant just uh, you can cut it and uh, come back a week later and there will already be new branches coming out of the cut you made <laughs> they grow like crazy so now I have a nice clean uh, piece of wood that I could use to stir um, my soup or hot, hot beverage whatever uh, you have the ability to craft something like that if I want to make a notch okay such as uh, for a um, um, tent stake or a pot hook uh, again the saw is very handy but what I can do is a push cut so I can push into the wood using my thumb okay I'm holding the knife over here in my hand and I'm using my thumb to push it all this hand over here is doing is controlling the knife blade it's not really putting any effort forth push it in and then I make a cut across here and you make your notch okay so one thing about this is brace your work on something solid put it put it against a tree put it against a fallen log uh, so that your hand isn't holding it up here. I, I just did that for film purposes, but for real safety um, Do this uh, braced on uh, some surface. I'm on a camp table here So I could brace it here, but I have to move the camera again So this is something to think about uh, Is push cuts. Okay again this hand, It's a reverse grip. Okay, you're holding it backwards in your hand and this hand's just guiding it. You push the blade with your thumb and then you just clean it up. Okay, just like that. Um, if I want to make a point on this, if it's gonna be a like a tent stake, what I wanna do again is reverse the knife in my hand. Okay, like that. And I'm gonna control this I use the muscles in my back to exert power and make my cuts. You got a lot more strength in these back muscles than you do if you just try to do this with your your hand, okay? And more control too. You can see how this is bouncing around. So if I hold it in close to my chest, I can make these cuts a lot stronger and with a lot more control so that's that's a method there that you can use um, we talked about stripping bark we talked about making a point we talked about making a notch if I want to uh, cut little branches off of a piece of wood don't cut down into the crotch of the piece of wood okay this is just going to bend and it's going to make a, a nasty cut. What you want to do is go with the direction of the uh, branch and the, the uh, tree. And again, this is using your back muscles. See how that easy that was just to cut that away? If I try to do it the other way, it'll just bend and it'll make a, uh, it'll, it'll tear the bark and such. So again, cut into the wood like that in the direction that the branches is, is going up. Here's a fairly substantial one. Okay. Let's try this. 
and we're able to cut it away. You can uh, really do some surprising um, cuts using that method. Now you notice I'm using the fixed blade for that. I could use the Essie, okay. Good strong lockup. I could use the locking blade on this Leatherman. This has a lock blade mechanism, okay. It'll do it too. And yes, the scout knife, but this would not be my choice because again, this can close on my hand or slip. It doesn't lock, it's a slip joint. And this would not be my choice. Um, water, hydration. If you are not staying hydrated when you are doing these uh, skills, um, you're gonna get confused, fuzzy headed, um, that's when accidents happen. So stay hydrated. Drink water while you're working, before you get dehydrated. I've only been out here about 30 minutes already. My mouth's getting dry. It's not a particularly warm day. It's probably about 75 degrees. It's a nice, comfortable t-shirt day. But... Um, you, use, you burn through water fast. So to review, um, sharpen your knives at home before you go out into the field. Put a good edge on them. Take with you a touch-up device, whatever you like, but some kind of a field touch-up um, sharpener so that you can maintain that edge as you're doing work in camp. First aid kit, carry it with you. This way, if you cut yourself or one of your campmates cuts themselves, you have a, a means to care for them and yourself. And finally, hydration. Stay hydrated, clear of he your head, clear of thought, so that uh, you don't have accidents. Okay, that's what I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the talk, and we'll chat with you later.